I've purchased a used sunfish sailboat, and I have here the rudder and tiller assembly. Looks like it's post-1973, but um, still when they were doing the mahogany rudders. And this particular one has a crack going down it, and when you pull on it, you can see that thing separate. So I'm going to take all the hardware off, see about gluing this crack, and then maybe putting a layer of fiberglass around the outside of the whole thing. I might have to sand it down a bit first. I'm assuming it had fiberglass originally. Um, maybe not, but I'm going to basically sand it down and then fiberglass it to strengthen it after I glue that crack. The bolt that goes through the aluminum extension for the tiller to the rudder looks like a 7 16th. I'm using an 11 millimeter on one side and a 7 16th on the other um, because I don't have two 7 16ths. And it's just the bolt. It uh, has a ni nylon lock locking nut here. And there is a washer of some sort underneath here. Looks like a plastic washer. This side has a place for a washer, but no washer there because it stayed in here. So the plastic washer stayed in here. And it stayed on there. Uh, this one. So I'll have to get a pry bar and pry that off. There's a little bit of give in this connection here, so I don't think I need to get the thickness exactly the same as original. Um, but I am going to sand it down a bit so that when I put the fiberglass on it doesn't make it too much thicker. On the tiller extension, um, it looks like somebody used some non-stainless hardware there, so I think I might replace that washer and lock washer. The bolts look to be okay. I'd have to take a look at those a little closer. So remove this little guy that springs it up if it hits something. Looks like it's just going to be the one bolt there. Um, this pin is going through and it's being held, it looks like, by the spring tension of these springs. So I'm going to have to pull the springs to get that pin out. Alright, I pulled these two springs. The pin is still stuck in there pretty well. I don't know if it's just some adhesive or dirt and grime. I'm going to hit it with a hammer a little lightly to see if it slides out or not. This guy here looks like it's just another, uh, I think it's a 7 16ths. Yeah, it looks like the 7 16ths or 11 millimeter. It's going to work on that guy just fine. Alright, so taking this off we have the nut with the nylon lock inside. It uh, looks like a washer that's attached pretty well. I'll probably have to pop off. The other side looks like there's also the bolt head and the washer there, so it looks like we have a washer on each end of this piece. All right, a little application of a hammer. I was able to get that guy pushed through. This guy slides off. It looks like it has two plastic washers on the inside, so these plastic washers are between that guy there and the rudder on the inside. There's one on each side, um, and you can see the crack goes from, you know, kind of there through here all the way up to the top. And you can see when I flex it here, it definitely flexes. I'm considering pulling it pretty far, maybe breaking it all the way, and then gluing that back on. Um, I sure can't see any fiberglass on this guy, so it might just be pure wood with no fiberglass reinforcement on it. So I might sand it down significantly and then put a layer of fiberglass on each side before I put this thing back together. All right, I put it on a bench, tapped it with a hammer till this guy was flat. You know, so now it's sticking out the other end quite a bit. I don't see anything. There might be, might have been some glue in there. It's hard to tell. Um, but just moving a little bit every time I hit it. So I'm going to get a uh, punch and punch it out the rest of the way through. All right, punched right out. When I put this back in, I just want to make sure that these two... Uh, notches are evenly spaced sticking out for the two springs. It wasn't quite evenly spaced when I took it apart, but they should be evenly spaced. An effort from keeping things from getting lost, I've actually put these two springs through that bolt and I put my washers all inside and outside there. The only thing this doesn't help me with 
is <laughs> that piece there. And also this thing can move. Um, so I am going to take these guys and put them all in one giant Ziploc bag and zip it all together. All right, we have separated the tiller. We have all the rudder hardware nicely packaged. And this leaves us with only a piece of fancily shaped wood with holes in exactly the right positions. So now I need to make this wood last longer. There's some definite gunk that has built up underneath the hardware. Might have been a little varnish there, might have been a little bit of... I think it's just varnish coming up. So it looks like this is just mahogany with varnish. I don't detect any fiberglass on it. This side has some type of a square sticker residue. I saw evidence of this square sticker residue on the washer there too, so it's like maybe it had a sticker on it before they put it, put the hardware on it, which seems a little lazy. But maybe it was on there really good. All right, so I scraped this thing, but I haven't sanded it yet. Looks like we're at 0.73 inches. For those of you in metric land, it's about 18.3, 18.4 millimeters. Up here where the hardware goes, 18.5. So that's the thickness we're aiming for, is about 0 0.73, 0 0.74 inches maximum after I get done putting fiberglass on and varnishing and everything. Well, I think it looks a lot nicer now, but you can obviously see that crack going pretty much down to here. And there is, I uncovered here, looks like a dowel stuck through. I don't know if this is part of the original manufacturing process, um, or if this has been repaired once already with that dowel. I'm a little hesitant to crack this open knowing that there's a dowel there. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is put pressure on it, get some glue in it, Flip it over, put pressure on it, get some glue in it, and then clamp this sucker in place and um, you know, wiggle it back and forth a bit. Hope the wood glue goes down a decent amount and glue this thing back into place um, as well as I can. And then fiberglass over the top. And I'm pretty sure that that fiberglass on the top combined with the glue in the crack is going to uh, keep that thing in pretty good shape. Watch here when I put this clamp on what that does to this crack here. You know, it goes in significantly, but there's still going to be a visible crack. Like an idiot, I blew away all my sand, my sawdust. I could have saved that and mixed it with glue and used it to patch in this crack a little bit. But I'm going to be doing more sanding on this guy after I glue it, so I suspect there'll be chances to patch this crack up a little bit. All right, tight bond three, waterproof. And we're going to put a generous amount all along both sides of this crack and then work it in by kind of flexing the board and pushing and wiping and everything. I'm only going to be able to show you this side because after this I'm going to turn the camera off, do the other side, and I'm going to hold it in the air with both hands while I do that. But essentially I'm counting on a little bit of capillary action, a little bit of gravity, a little bit of downward pressure to drive that glue into this crack and it's obviously not going to go as deep as if I had broken the whole thing apart and was coating both interior surfaces um, so it's not optimal for repairing this wood break but it's as good as I'm going to do on this guy all right, I have wood glue all over everything. We want to get it off of things before it dries. And this is 
thinning down the wood glue with any water that gets in the cracks. So I want to be careful not doing too much of that. I'm not too worried about this because I'm going to have to sand it anyways. But you don't want giant large amounts of glue. And I had put a lot of glue over there that did not go into the crack. So any weakening of the glue from water is offset by making the glue run into the crack. Now we're going to clamp this thing. And if we're lucky, some glue will run out of the crack when we clamp it, indicating that we're doing some good. Glue's had a day to dry, and I can no longer flex the cracked part of the board, so that's good. Um, you can still see where the crack was, especially on the end here. But um, I'm not sure. I think this watermark might be from the glue and the water that I used to wipe it up with. I'm going to sand this a bit more um, and see if that goes away. It could potentially also have been water getting into the crack and spurting out in the wood, but I think it's from me gluing it. So I think if I, I think it's just surface. So I'm, I'm hopeful when I sand that it's going to go away. Um, then I'm going to measure the thickness and see how much I've knocked it down. And if I haven't knocked it down as much of the width of the fiberglass I'm going to be putting on it, or the thickness of the fiberglass, I'll have to sand it a little more even. Looking at my board thickness here, I have like 17.6 millimeters. Let's see what do I got there? 17.75 millimeters. Give you an inches world where it 0 0.70. So two layers of this six inch or sorry six ounce cloth tape. Fiberglass cloth tape's pretty small, you know that is 0.3 millimeters. And it looks like I've gone down about a full millimeter. So I think with epoxy and fiberglass this will still be about the same size. So I'm not looking to cut much thickness down. I'm going to sand it I've gone up to uh, 100 grit, and maybe maybe even we'll go to 150, 200 or so, um, just to clean things up a little bit more, get the glue evened off, and so forth. The glue residue came off nicely, nice and smooth. I don't want to get it any uh, narrower, so I think I'm just going to fiberglass it here. Um, I might want to try to patch up that visible crack. This side looks good. That side there, there's a little bit of visible cracking there. So I'm going to see if I can collect some of this sawdust to use for patchwork. I should have done this when I was really grabbing a whole bunch of stuff before with the 60 grit. But we'll see if I can get enough here to mix up at least the right color with some wood glue. Well, that ought to be enough to patch in at least the top. Okay, we're going to mix a little bit of wood glue. Maybe a little bit more. With the sawdust I collected. make a paste of approximately the right color because it's the same type of wood. And then we're going to try to fill this little bit of crack here, which maybe isn't as bad as I was thinking in my own mind. But we're going to jam this paste in there and let it fill in the top of that crack so it won't be visible from the top. I'm pretty happy with this side here, but I have a little bit of extra paste, so I'm going to just rub this peanut buttery paste along here in an effort to fill in any little holes that it'll go in on that crack. Of course I'm going to have to sand this entire side when I'm done drying. So it adds an extra sanding step, but if it smooths out that crack a little bit, makes it a little harder to see, 
not going to add any real structural strength, but since this is going to be visible underneath my fiberglass, I want it to look as nice as possible. All right, finished sanding the uh, glue and sawdust mixture off. And the uh, crack is significantly less noticeable up here on the top. And um, that side there looks pretty good. Obviously you can tell it was there if you know where you're looking, but um, pretty good. So now we're going to cover this thing with fiberglass and I'm focusing mostly on the flat parts here to bridge where this crack was. Um, you know, this edge was not intended for fiberglass folding, so we're not going to be able to fold an ed fold fiberglass over that edge. So I'm just going to have to do one on each side, do this side, and then when that's, that's done, flip it over and do this side and merge them at the edge there, then grind those things off. Cut a lot more fiberglass down than you'd expect if you were just, you know, wrapping this around once or cutting two pieces out. And that's because I'm going to be cutting this thing at a 45 degree angle so that this cloth will be on a bias. It'll help wrapping around a few places, even though I'm not trying to do a full wrap around, um, it ought to help with some of these curves and corners. And everything anywhere near that black line is going to get cut off and trimmed. You can see here how I kind of needed that full piece of cloth to get this 45 degree angles cut out. Of course I'll have a lot of scrap which I can use for small pieces here and there. I have a piece of plywood underneath here so I can lift this whole thing up and move it when I'm letting it dry. I have double layers of plastic because we are definitely dropping epoxy off of all these edges. And I have paint points. And you might ask, well I see the paint points under here, but what is that set for? Well, I'm working with these three holes. So three of my paint points hit those holes, and I only have to worry about a few others on the actual surface of the board here. So I've set up this guy here to index into these same holes over there. So when I flip it, I have both sets ready to go. I have a foam roller, some squeegees, a heat gun if I need to pop some air bubbles, and my amazingly thick six ounce fiberglass cloth. Normally you'd probably use something like two ounce or four ounce for this if you're doing something where you're trying to make it super um, transparent, which I kind of am here because I'm not hoping to not be able to paint this at the end. Um, but I want the extra strength to kind of reinforce this thing with that crack going through it. Um, so I'm going to make it stronger as opposed to prettier. And this wood is almost certainly going to absorb fiberglass. So to or epoxy. To keep it from absorbing the epoxy from the fiberglass, I'm going to pre-coat it and let that absorb in a bit. Put down the woven fiberglass cloth, probably use the foam roller to put epoxy all over it and squeegee it out to the edges. We're going to be dropping a lot of epoxy off these edges, so I have to watch out for drips forming on the underside. Um, so I'm going to try to drop it off the edge and not actually make a drip on the underside. Um, and we're going to let that thing cure for an hour or two. I'm using a, a slow hardener, so I have a little time to work here. Um, get it so it's just hard enough to cut off. Cut off the edge maybe half inch out, at which point I flip it over, repeat the procedure on the other side, kind of merging the two pieces of fiberglass cloth together at the edges, and then let that dry or cure. Um, then a day or so later, I'll cut everything down, following the edge, getting really close to the edge, maybe put a little more epoxy around the edge, grind it down, sand it, and so forth. And I'm trying to get a lot of epoxy in here. I'm trying to really 
completely wet out the fibers so that this thing goes transparent. Um, we'll see how successful I am at that without getting any air bubbles trapped underneath. So I need to, um, and also without floating the fiberglass on too much epoxy underneath the fiberglass. So lots of, uh, lots of things I'm trying to do here. We'll see how successful it is after I'm done. All right, this has had an hour to cure. I don't know if it's set up enough to make cutting this easy, but we're gonna give it a shot and see. No, it's still dragging. So we're gonna have to let that set. I'll probably try it in another hour. All right, now it's been two hours since I put the epoxy on. Still tacky to the touch on the surface. But it is cutting. I think it's just slightly sooner than I would normally cut this off, except for the fact I want to turn it over and do the other side. So I'm pushing this a little bit earlier than I would normally do this. It's cutting pretty easily though for the most part. Yeah, so I got bubbles of epoxy on the back side here and this is why I was hurrying to flip this thing over is I really was trying to make sure I didn't have problems on the back side or if I did I could somehow hopefully resolve them. The back side is tacky um, but I'm going to put the next piece of cloth down on it and then epoxy that sucker in place. Now it is tacky. So I have to be careful to get it overlapping enough in all the places where I want it to be overlapping. And not build up wrinkles because of the tack. And luckily the weave here moves a lot, so I can tack it down and push, push things out. So I'm working from the center out. And then I'm trying to line up the edges here with the edges from the other side. Now I'm going to hope to work those together a little bit later in the layout process. I'm pinching the edges together here. I have a lot of overlap on the top piece here.
All right, that went pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the top surface. The edges where I'm joining these two together, you can see right in there, there's a little bit of bubbling between those two sheets. Um, this epoxy from the top coat is not yet tacky. I'm going to come back in about 30 minutes to an hour and I'm going to pinch those together a little more and see if I can drive the bubbles out and keep them out because right now I can pinch them out but then the two sheets pull apart and air pops back in. I think when it gets just a little bit tackier that's going to hold down a little better. And regardless, even if I have bubbles in the final product, I'm just going to be grinding that edge down and then I'm going to be coating the whole thing with epoxy. I'm going to have to coat the whole thing with epoxy after sanding a bit to, you know, get the um, woven fabric pattern out or hide it under epoxy all the way down. So there's going to be three or four coats of just plain pure epoxy with no fiberglass after I uh, sand and trim things down. It's been 30 minutes. I don't know if this is tacked up enough for me to... It feels pretty tacky. I'm trying to pinch together these two pieces of fiberglass cloth and get rid of these air bubbles. Here, I actually heard one pop there. They're getting smaller, at least. When I do this, I can see it pull the fibers through this part up here, and I'm a little worried about pulling those too much, although it is slow cure resin, so theoretically it should be okay still, and still set up well. But it does look like it is getting rid of some of those air bubbles. The problem is it's so tacky sometimes my gloves put it back in when I go back through. But all in all, I think I did more help than harm with that little section. And that was the section with most of the issues. I'm hitting a couple up farther up the top, but for the most part, that there was the one with the issues. So I think I'm pretty much done with this. I'm going to let it cure overnight. Then I'll have to sand everything down and trim all the edges off and so forth. It's been about five to six hours since I mixed this epoxy. And it's setting up, but it's definitely still green enough where you can cut it with a razor knife, at least most parts of it. A little section right there is getting a little harder. But this is certainly better than trying to do it tomorrow. All right, this is cured overnight. Not too bad for our first attempt at uh, fiberglassing over wood and trying to keep it transparent. So there's bubbles on the top, but I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to be sanding this whole thing down anyways before I put my next coat of epoxy on it. There's places where it's completely smooth and the woven fiberglass is completely under the epoxy, but there's a lot of places where the weave is showing through, and that's kind of expected for your first coat. So I'm going to be drilling these holes out, then I'll be able to hang this thing upright. Um, I'm going to be sanding the entire surface to get rid of all the bubbles and so forth. This side here doesn't have as many bubbles. It's a little better. Um, the weave looks like it's showing up more. This is the first side I did that I flipped it over. So it does have along here, we have some um, places where the epoxy is up because it was dripping down kind of and forming drips almost. Not full drips, but thicker. Um, so we're going to be sanding all that level. And of course, when I'm sanding this, we're going to be sanding the entire edge here down. And we might be breaking the join between these two pieces of fiberglass, and that's okay because we'll be filling in epoxy 
around the edges anyways. Um, and you know, we're going to be taking the things off the edges here. You'll notice there's no fiberglass along the top. I don't plan on fiberglassing the top. Um, I'm just going to sand this whole thing down. We'll put epoxy over the top edge, a couple of coats when I'm doing the rest of this. And so it's just going to be a layer of epoxy on that without fiberglass along that top because there's no real strength need for it up there. Um, so all in all, pretty good. A lot of finishing work. We're going to do three or four coats of epoxy, and then after that, we'll put some varnish on to protect the epoxy from UV. Um, but essentially, the fiberglassing part is done. Just a lot of coating with epoxy and varnish at this point. Lots and lots of sanding.